Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with another episode of Speaking of My Mind. How are you all doing today? I hope you're doing well. I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, been uh, thinking uh, a lot about the political future and about where this, uh, where the UK is going. You know, I did a, I did a Speaking of My Mind episode about actually about how much we wanted the Conservatives out. And I guess I'm going to talk a little bit about politics today because um, it's been a while since I kind of freelanced more about politics because I don't normally free freelance it. Um, I speak uh, think about it in relation to the articles and whatnot that I talk about there. Whereas here, I've kind of like got an open mind about it. So, um, you know, looking at the landscape and where things are right now, it is... You know, when you look into the detail, it does look quite, quite dejected, very downward, very poor. And it does make you feel like, like things will never get better, if you know what I think. Or the saying is sometimes it will get worse before it gets better. Um, many people feel that, you know, that they need to vote Labour because of the way the electoral system works. And I get that. Some people just feel like they're not going to vote at all because there's no point. And there's obviously lots of policies and promises of what, what people are going to make and saying they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And it's just like, yeah, we've heard all these things before and then you just don't, just don't deliver them, you know. They say they're going to do, do something and they don't deliver it, you know. And it really does put into question how much there is trust and whatnot in politics. And what's really quite infuriating is how many scandals that have been going around. Like, the thing is, if, if the me mainstream media have reported him out scandals uh, as publicly, as well as they should, they don't publicly report them enough, but if they publicly did them enough on news sites, and, and enough news sites and enough um, in papers and whatnot, there'd be so much more anger in the UK. And there's already anger, but there'd be so so much more of it it really really would guys um if, if if people knew the amount of scandals if you put all the scandals together you know and literally people see that it really does open open the eyes of a lot of people and, and questions about the integrity of uh the integrity of our politicians and let's be very very clear here uh for those who are supporting labor Labour are no cliquey, are no way near shape or form clean in any way, shape or form. I know I have the staunch Labour defenders uh, uh, part of the subscriber count and um, I appreciate their support. But make no mistake about it, Labour are not clean. Yes, they are much, they are not as dirty as the Conservatives. That is true. It doesn't change the fact that Labour haven't had their own skeletons in their closet and I've covered them. On my channel you may not like it and you may not agree with it but the skeletons are there for the Labour Party. Liberal Democrats have obviously lost a lot of credibility when they went into the coalition with the Conservatives and they had a stupid stupid uh, leader in Joe Swinson thinking that they were going to be bold enough to win the win the election in 2019 uh, and she ended up losing her own seat which was very so made a complete, absolute mess of themselves, the Liberal Democrats, after that. They really did. Uh, you know, them standing, obviously, on the, the platform of rejoining of rejoining the EU and all that kind of stuff. Second referendum. And Jeremy Corbyn, you know, I, I will say, you know, you know, he, he's, uh, at times he, he felt like his heart was in the right place and his policies were in the right place, but, you know, he, he was just too too much against the the establishment and because he was so much against the establishment uh, the media the mainstream media ripped him apart at every chance that they could get and discredit him and um and it hurt him and those within within labor obviously ousted him as well um and you've got to be willing to compromise and he did not he did not do the compromises whatsoever which is um very uh very frustrating to say the least um but as for the green party you know, um, I think it's a real shame that um, Caroline Lucas is um, heading out. So, you know, when you hear her speeches in the House of Commons, you know, you feel like she's such a breath of fresh air. 
in that house and uh, they're going to be losing her. Now, unfortunately, sorry to say this, as much as I'm a quite a supporter of, of the Green Party, some of the stories I've been hearing lately are very troublesome. There obviously there were issues around uh, transgender within the Green Party and there have been obviously uh, there's obviously been talk of potential anti-semitism within the green party as well now i generally don't think there is uh there is that much anti-semitism because it the attacks of anti-semitism on them have come from uh the jewish chronicle so you can clearly see that um, they're trying to smear the green party because um they have been doing well in the pollings and uh obviously they're an alternative to to the other political parties. Now, as for reform, former, the former Brexit party, um, people are literally just turning to them, Jim, simply because they don't really have anyone else to to turn to, and they've always been conservative, and they always believed in conservative values, and they feel that the conservatives have kind of abandoned them uh, for what for what it's worth. And uh, you know, all in all, I still when I hear people still playing the vote conservative it really does boil my blood because they're completely in denial of um of what's been happening in the last 14 years the damage has been caused the austerity has been imposed the losses the losses for communities for uh and the the, the losses of police stations and the cuts to our nhs uh all the cutbacks that we that's been done and it was all supposed to be like about reducing the debt so I remember David Cameron's always saying we've got to get control of our debts, we've got to pay back our debts and all that kind of thing. And now we hear ourselves we're in more debt than before. And you ask yourselves, in, well, what was the point of all these tax cuts and austerity when we are supposed to be paying back the debt? And then you, you, I ask myself, where's all the money gone? And then obviously Brexit happened. And then you look at where we are now. And you look at the situation, the continuous cycles of problems around brexit it's just absolutely diabolical um and they just won't go away no matter how much people keep saying it's over it's done get over it it will never end it will never be over until we are back in the european union because not only are there uh people with that are there political activists and parties and, and communities out there intent on getting the uk back into the eu but there's a lot of experts a lot of businesses who are going to suffer and telling to them to adapt is not and telling them just to accept it and just to adapt well no you know for them some of them their whole business relies on being a part of the uh, the eu now their business is going to suffer and they're going to go which means less money for the economy which means everyone is worse off um the not having the freedom of movement because when we had freedom of movement, we were able that those who crossed over the border from 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 France over to England, we were able to send them back to France because of the deal that because of the agreements that we have with France, we don't have that agreement anymore because we're no longer part of the EU, which means we are taking in more migrants. As a result of that, that's playing a factor into it. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, they didn't want to tell. You know, the Brexiters didn't want to tell you that, did they? So yeah, you know, this whole sovereignty stuff hasn't exactly worked out for us either. And uh, all this, and while this is all going along, Scotland are trying to find a way to get, uh, to have that second independent vote um, as well, because um, promises were, were broken in back in before 2014. As far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, they're entitled to a second, second, second vote just based on, just solely, among other things. But the main reason I say they're entitled to that second vote because they were lied to in 20, before 2014. They were told that they, were, they would not be leaving the EU. They were told there would not be a vote on a uh, referendum on the European Union, staying in, in or out of the European Union. And here they find themselves uh, a country that voted to remain, find themselves outside the EU against their will. Yeah, so not a very good situation whatsoever for, in politics right now. Um, but despite all every, all these things that are going on, um, I still have optimism because if you don't have optimism, what you're going to do is just drown yourself in negativity all the time. So I don't know when the good times are going to come around. I don't know when the positivity is going to come. I'd like to think that Labour will have some good policies and good ideas and things that will make a difference for 
uh, for the UK, but time will obviously tell if Labour get a majority or a hung parliament and whatnot. We'll have to wait and see come the general election as we get closer to it. But what I will say is, is that, um, you know, better to be optimistic than pessimistic about, about the future, that is for sure, guys. So what do you guys think? What do you guys make of my rambling? What do you guys think of some of the political parties? What do you guys make of the future um, right now in terms of Britain as politics and whatnot? Let me know your thoughts and more in the comment section down below. If you found this video informative, hit the like button, share it across social media, subscribe, all that usual stuff, guys. And I hope to catch you all very, very soon.